This is the equivalent of being in a lift in the engine bay of your car. It is. The engine lives out there. And we're in a lift to go down it. Oh! Oh my God! This isn't just an engine room. This is a cathedral. And at the heart of it, this. It covers three stories of engine. That, that's the top. That's your cylinder head, cylinders. Down there is the crankcase and the crankshaft. It's all one thing. All of that from there down to the bottom. And there's another one over there. Each 43,000 horsepower diesel engine has its own team of engineers to keep it running smoothly 24-7. and they can even make their own parts. Chief Engineer Alexandra Yushchenko is confident he can fix most problems with running repairs, hundreds of miles from the nearest port. So, a piston cracks, can you repair that? Yeah, yeah we can exchange, right? Yeah. Uh, Conrod breaks. So, like, Conrod's there, yeah, vinyl also can do. Really? Uh, cylinder liner cracks. Yeah, we have spare ones. Crankshaft bearing goes. Also, we have spare. Also, get the... okay. The crankshaft itself goes. Then we, then we done. We need <laughs> right That's, that's <laughs> it. You've got the best toys in the whole world. I'm, apps. I'm so jealous. But can I carry on having a look around? Yes, please, you are welcome. Thank you. I've never felt so small next to an engine, which is no surprise because you won't find anything much bigger outside of a power station. These engines may be gigantic, but what's really, really clever is that they're also very, very simple. Eight cylinders, it's so big and slow moving. You can actually work out the RPM. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. I make that about 25 RPM, something like that. And here's the incredible thing about this, and it'll blow your mind because it blew mine. This gigantic, gargantuan engine is a two stroke. So its nearest relation in my mind is the engine in my first motorcycle and your garden strimmer. Although it's a bit bigger, obviously. Look, here's a piston I stripped off my motorbike for comparison. So this is a spare piston off the engine. Lose all of this stuff off the top that's for carrying it. And there are eight of these doing that inside that gigantic engine, turning the crankshaft and letting the engine do its work. And when you work on this engine, you don't just get your hands dirty. It's more of a whole body experience. There is a man in the crankcase splashing about in the sub. It's absolutely doing my noggin. Now it's my turn to feel like Ant-Man. We're going to check on the pistons by climbing inside the air intake. After you. If I were to do this in my car, I'd need to shrink myself 20 times. I'm climbing inside an engine. Oh. Well, I mean, it's cramped, but considering we're in an engine, it's surprisingly roomy. So this is the piston coming past. This is our three piston rings, you see? Layer is good. This that we're looking at is just a small part on the engines I'm used to, and we're crawling around in it. I honestly feel like I've been shrunk. It's like stepping out of a science fiction movie. That. I just took my breath away. I never thought I'd walk around in an engine. And the next time I look at an engine in a car or a motorbike, I'm not actually going to think big. I'm going to look at it and think small, because I'm going to see myself wandering around inside it. That was mind-blowing. And the brain-boggling scale goes on. The engine in an average car runs for about 10,000 miles a year. These engines do that in a month which means they need servicing continuously. So if you're an engineer on this ship, 
you're changing a lot of oil filters. This is an oil filter like the one that sticks out the side of your car yeah, engine. Exactly it's just like the one, yeah. bigger. You just grab it and it's come out just like... It's quite heavy! Oh, hurry up! Oh, I'm it's incredibly heavy! Oh, I'm only small and not very strong. My arm won't go up! <laughs> Ah, ah, where's the accident book? <laughs> so this is just to clean the oil. It's, it's fact, just to clean just the oil. One tiny bit of a gigantic oil filter. Yes. Like this, just like that. I haven't then broken all it. All the way until it falls down. Is this by any chance one of the less interesting jobs um, on board as an engineer? For me, I think any job is fun. Oliver, what's a fourth engineer then? A fourth engineer is the least experienced engineer oh, right. You get the bad jobs <laughs> and then you give them to me. Yeah, so. kind of. <laughs> That's what's happened. This is therapeutic. But you might be wondering how these sometimes lethal and often very heavy containers are pushed across the water, all 18,000 of them at a time. Well, this is the first supersized container ship to use side-by-side -side engines, powering two bronze propellers that cost one million dollars each. Here, at the back of this simply gigantic engine, the crankshaft is bolted to this enormous flywheel, which is now number one on my top ten list of places not to get your tie caught. And that, in turn, is bolted directly to this. Propeller shaft. There's no gearing. There's nothing between it and the engine. They're just bolted to one another. And now I'm tingling all over. I'm not joking as we go along the propeller shaft, moving towards the very end of the ship. Come on in, see if you can get in. Oh! Oh, that is. That is genuinely. Eerie, because just the other side of of this steel here, at the end of that propeller shaft is the propeller. 70 tons, 10 meters across, turning with unimaginable force.